Now, what I want to talk about is strokes. I'm going to ask another question and see if anybody answers it quickly. How many people out there own one strobe? How many out there own two strobes? Because one of the, one of the most common questions that we get, uh, doesn't matter if it's you know, via email before we go die, uh, before we go on a trip, uh, when we've got students either here in Bali or we're doing one of our group trips, uh, one, of the, one of the most common questions we get asked is, is it okay if I only have one strobe? Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, should I buy, I, I only have such a, such a budget for a strobe. Is it better that I buy two small strobes uh, rather than one big strobe? And so these are quite common questions that we get often. And one of the things about that is, I don't think it's something that you really need to worry about. So many people get hung up on the idea of you got to have two strobes. You got to have two strobes. You got to have two strobes. And it's not true. Because one, this is one of the most expensive pieces of kit that you're going to buy. If you're going to buy a, a, a full size, again, it's not that big, but you're going to buy a powerful strobe like this, plus the arms and the, all that kind of stuff. We're talking close to $1,000 all in for one of these. So if you buy two, that's $2,000 for two sets of arms, uh, two strobes, batteries, blah, blah, blah. You're looking at a very high investment. You could get a single stroke and knock that down by half, and you're going to be very, very happy with the results you're going to get. Or the other question that we quite often get is, is it better to buy two small ones rather than one big one? And I would say no, unless you are a mm -hmm. macro enthusiast and you don't want to shoot wide angle at any time you only want to shoot macro 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 you go to black sand places all the time then fine buy two smaller ones but if if you also dive places like Rajampat, Komodo, Palau etc etc where you're going to be shooting big stuff um, colorful sea fans Fiji then you're going to want to have at least one big stroke yeah and I would always suggest to buy one big one uh, that's powerful and then if you can't afford to get a second one, just wait. Wait a couple of years, yeah. use the one, and then buy a second one one. You can afford it rather than buying two smaller ones. Um, that's the way I did. That's, that's I, I, I started the way I did as well. one camera, then I buy one strobe, but I bought the most uh, powerful strobe right. that I could buy at that time. And then I got a second one maybe after one, two years. Right. And it, it, it's, it's a really a smart way to go because... Once you've got two small, if you, if you buy two small ones and you think, oh, yeah, I'm only going to shoot nudibranchs, but then eventually you go to a place like Raj Ampad, you're going to kick yourself and say, oh, I need my, my two small ones are not enough to, to light up this Good entire sea fan. So I think you're better off. You, you'll actually be able to light up more of a big sea fan with one mm. big strobe and a nice diffuser on it than you will with two smaller ones in many cases. So, again... But then the question is, when people have two strobes, and they buy these two strobes, and they come in, what they do is they put them both on the same power, they put them there, and then they go boom, boom, boom. What's one of the first things I do? I don't know. I know a few of you out there that are watching have been on some of our photo classes. What I like to do is when I, when I see someone with two strobes, and we're in a place like Lembe, or we're in a place like Ahmed or Tulumben, and we're swimming along, and I let the people go in. And they'll go in and they'll set themselves up. They'll get the two strobes. We'll have talked about strobe positioning, so they'll have the strobes in, in the right place. And they'll go in and then they'll take a shot. And they'll take another shot and they'll get the exposure right. Boom, boom, boom. They'll take a couple of great shots. They're happy with it. They show it to you like, okay, great. And then I just write on my site, okay, now turn off the left strobe. And so, boom, they just turn it off. You don't have to, you know, take it away. Just simply turn it off. They take another shot. And then they go look at it, and quite often you'll actually see them go, you know, their, their eyes just pop open. They're like, wow, what a difference. If you pop up those two first shots there, because you may be surprised to know this. Like I said, I always dive with my two strobes on the camera. Doesn't matter if I'm shooting wide or shooting macro. I will always dive with both of them there on the camera. Mm -hmm. But I probably say that 80% of my, my macro photos are shot with one strobe. Same. The Me reason too. why I've got two on there, sometimes I use the left strobe, sometimes I use the right strobe. 
depending, it will depend on the position of the subject. So if you look at this photo here, mm -hmm. that is shot with two strobes. What two strobes is going to do, again, this is kind of not a mistake, but one of the things that a lot of people will do when they first start is they will take those two strobes, they'll put them side by side, and they will put them on the same power or put them on TTL, mm -hmm. and they'll take everything with those two strobes. They're getting a good exposure. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. They're taking the exact same flat illumination. And what it does is it gives you flat lighting. So if you look at that photo, there's nothing wrong with it. It's well, um, it's well lit. The exposure is nice. You'll see you've got the fish. You've got the, the, the little, uh, what you call it, the little colonies of Assidians behind them. But you'll notice that it's flat. Everything is lit up. You can see the background. Everything is a little bit, it's a little bit dull, mm. shall we say. Now go to the second one. Yeah. Go to the next. Almost looks like 2D. Yeah, exactly. Next one. Next photo. And if we look at that one, what did I do? Use one strobe. Exactly. All I did was I reached over, I turned off my right strobe, and I shot it with the left strobe. And now you can see everything on the right-hand side has now been thrown into shadow. You've got that black. Like you see the first Ascidian down on the bottom uh, left, and you can see that it throw, casts a shadow onto the bottom of the fish, which creates that nice black background. People mm -hmm. love the black background. And you will notice when you shoot with two strobes, it's much more difficult to get the black background. If you shoot with one strobe, you'll get a lot better black background. It's what we call directional lighting. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Uh, skip the, the wide angle one and go to, go to the, the eel. If you look at this one, again, this is flat lighting. I've got two strobes aiming straight ahead. I could do different things. You know, I could turn down the power of one uh, or I could do different light. We'll, we'll talk about this in a particular, you know, a specific tutorial about, you know, changing light positions. But in that normal strobe positioning, all I simply do here, flat light, take away my which strobe? My do, 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 do. go to the next photo. Which strobe have I taken away here? Let me know. Anyone who's going to come up with the first answer here? Which strobe did I take away? Did I take away the left strobe or did I take away the right strobe? Anyone? 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 Let's see how fast the internet is. We are on a delay. We are on a little bit of a delay. <laughs> but basically what you see here between these photos is now you can't see the coral reef behind the moray. This is the same moray, same set of shots. He's just moving around back and forth. But now you don't see the background because that second light, all it's doing is lighting up the background. the background. I don't need that that light because I can I can use think about the directional of it. So if I bring that strobe, Steve says the left. Steve, Correct, Steve. I turned off the left. Good job. Well, yeah. So you, you can get... ah, and Mr. Tosh even figured it out. Tosh doesn't even take photos. So what I've done there is I've used what we call directional lighting. So think about that when you're down there when you've got two strobes, especially when you're shooting creatures. Um, nudibranchs, fish, whatever happens, look at it. If it's coming at you in a, in a off center like this, have your light come at it from this side. Don't mm. light it up from that side. If it's coming at you from this direction, then light it from here. Light up the side of the body that's facing you. Don't light up the background because the background is being lit up by the second strobe and that can create a distracting background. Like we've got, go back to the first, uh, more a yeah yeah distracting back yeah it's totally different yeah this is an outstanding shot and this is uh, let's say an id shot. an id shot if we go to the the next photo down um again same thing it's an identification shot but what i've done in the next photo this one i can do with one strobe or two strobe it doesn't really matter in this situation because i don't have a background so in this one, it doesn't matter if, if you can, where you're not, the, the key thing with this directional lighting is trying to avoid lighting up the background. If you don't have a background, don't worry about it. Um, this shot, you could do with one or two. Next one. Oh, you see, I used the wrong. Uh, this one. On. Yes. If we look at that one, again, directional lighting. That is coming from the left. Uh, you see, I don't light up any of the background. If we look at the, the lionfish there, same thing. 
coming from the left and my right strobe is turned mm -hmm. off, I've just used directional lighting. So yeah. it makes a really nice separation of your, stro of your subject from your background. Now, it makes the colors pop too. Yeah, it makes the colors pop as well. One of the key things with, with strobes, um, with one and two, is wide angle. When it comes to wide angle, yes, I would prefer to have two strobes, but I don't necessarily always use two strobes in wide angle as well. Go to the other one, the, that one. Um, in a situation like this, I've got a very large C fan. If I've got a very large C fan like that, it's difficult for me to light the entire thing with just one strobe. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, I need that, uh, even though these can be quite wide with a, with a diffuser, it's not going to be wide enough to light up the whole thing. So if you've just got one, I would in this situation try and take it to 12 o'clock and try and illuminate as much of it as you yeah. can. You might not get the entire thing in, but it will look better than if it so was... So when you say at 12 o'clock like yes, that, Yes, right? exactly. So anywhere between in, sort of 11... Middle. And one o'clock in that area would be good. You don't want to have it over here because you're going to get just light up one yeah, side or the other. One spot. So with, with wide angle and one strobe, keep it up there. But on smaller wide angle subjects, go to the, the other one, that one. Move the screen a little further over. Is that all the way? There you go. Ah, there you go. What I'm doing here in this situation is I have got open water column on the left mm -hmm. and I've got my subject on the right. This is not a large sea fan. This is a smaller sea fan. What's going to happen if I turn on my left strobe? What am I lighting up? The water column. The water column. And if I light up the water column, what am I going to get? Backscatter. Backscatter. So I told you yeah, something, you man. I feel like I'm under exam in you, here, man. You, you're <laughs> doing well. You are doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Almost looks like I can teach too. Huh? <laughs> and I don't want to have backscatter because what I'm trying to get in this photo is that I've got those really nice rays. I've got that yeah. beautiful blue water. Super clean. If I'm using two strobes on there, if I'm using that left strobe, I am going to create some backscatter in that blue. Whereas if I keep it over on the right, I'm lighting up the mm. sea fan without lighting up the blue, or without you know screwing up and getting backscatter the in the blue. Column. So in this situation, I only used one strobe. You can actually see on the very left edge of the the uh, yeah yeah where i've i wasn't quite wide enough to light it yeah, up yeah. the entire thing but i i don't find that all that uh, distracting, distracting. No. so even though you're shooting wide angle and you're shooting wide scenes think about what you're shooting are you shooting into the water column if you're shooting into the water column maybe you don't need that second stroke uh, on medium subjects if big subjects yeah you will but on a on a medium yeah. subject like this I got a couple of examples here too from, ah. uh, from my Instagram where I was actually shooting just with go. one strobe. This is a very good example too. And I'm just using uh, my left. Uh, no, actually I was using my right because you see like here on the left, mm -hmm. I had the reef. So right. it actually did not fit there unless I was keeping it, uh, let's say more Maybe center. Like, it's like yes, 11 or 12, like you were saying before. But instead I, I took the right strobe, I switched off the left and I brought the right strobe up and keep it somewhere here. in that area. There. Yep. And because then, you don't want to light up the water column where you're looking at the mangrove. Yes, exactly. So I, I move it all the way. And as you can see, I didn't light up anything beyond that. So when I saw this picture, the first thing that I've seen underwater, the scene was like this beautiful background, sorry, this beautiful tree and the sun rays. Right. And then I thought like, wow, that's, that's very nice. But uh, let's try to find something, you know, to keep a, use this as a, a as a background and try to find something, something as a foreground. foreground. Exactly. So you have two elements in the one near photo. And far. Yes, and uh, I didn't want to have, let's say, one subject which was too crowded. You said exactly. Yes. So I didn't want to have a subject that was, uh, let's say, uh, too distracting foreground. Right. So I found this, uh, let's say, simple, beautiful red uh, yep. soft nice colors there. Yes. But if I was using two strobes, I would have light up too much in the front and would have taken away from, right. from the background, yep. so, like you were saying before. Then I had another one. Yeah. Actually, here. I'm looking at that one beside the... Okay, yep, that one too. Yep. This one is blue windows. Blue windows. Same. Normally, people concentrate more by the windows. And I said, oh, let's use the windows as a background. 
and find something in the foreground. And I use again only one strobe. In fact, you can see here the shadows in the yep. middle there. Because my light was coming from the right or the left? From the right. From the right. Correct. I'm good at this. So if your subject is slightly to the right, use your right strobe. If your strobe subject is slightly to the left, left strobe. That's the way to go. That one photo that you've got uh, uh, on the top left? They're too big. Too big, too big. Ah, uh, yes. Top left. Here? That one. Now, in a situation like this, this is where you definitely want to have your two strokes. Two strokes. Because you've got that huge big school of fish. You've got colorful coral on the left. You've got colorful coral on the right. Yeah. You really want to be able to, to illuminate the entire scene. Mm -hmm. So with this one, this is the kind of thing where you'd be much better off with two yes. strokes rather than one. Yes. But there are some things that I do still uh, differently, rather like you said before, rather than keep them, let's say, both at uh, the same power. For instance, I put my right strobe here, uh, which the subject is closer to me. I keep it, uh, let's say, maybe a two third of a power, yep. and the left one I give it, uh, I blast it full power right. to try to catch a little bit of more color in the distance over there. In fact, you can see some of the orange fish here on the left are slightly brighter than that. You know where is this? I'm going to say this is at the Japanese wreck here in Bali. Correct. Oh, I'm good. Beautiful sight. The Raja Ampat of Bali. If you guys want to come to Bali for your first trip, we'll take you there. This, one strobe. One strobe, from the left. Uh, right straight it, in the middle. Straight in the middle. Straight at 12 o'clock. So this trip happened to me that uh, I started it with two strobes and I floated one during the trip. So I was left okay. with uh, in Komodo National Park, uh, which is a great wide angle destination. I was left there with just one strobe. So I, I, it was actually a great exercise to go and practice uh, how my lighting works in wide angle with just one strobe and limit my, my, my choices. In fact, like one subject and no much other things around, like, you, right. like the previous shot that we just uh, showed. And you can see that one strobe can light up pretty I much all whole mantle. entire mantle, yeah. yeah. Because the uh, spread of it is... And look how many likes you got on that. It's a lot of likes on that photo. 758 likes, 759 likes. Yes. A popular guy. I used to. You're not following Luca's Instagram? Instagram. That was it. Go now.